Hello, this is George Hayes, and this is Introduction to C, uh, tutorial number seven. We're going to be covering scope and external variables today, and this is going to be at least part one. So, if we can get more done in this time, a few minutes, then see if I can keep it short or not. All right, I'm going to go ahead and label this project C007 on my thing and build project go to main.c and take away the first line to print f don't need it and we're going to create an integer rv equals zero that's going to be for return value don't really need to do that just have it for me uh, we're going to create a character array called buffer length 20 equals hello world wow typing's bad today and we're going to print that out with a print f statement and do percent s and buffer over here and that and then we're going to create a secondary function called integer function 1 and go ahead and create another character array with the same name One equals this is funk one so we know what it does and another copy this print f statement up here if we do shift down control c and then we can do a control V in here and then return and zero. Now we need to do our function declaration up here. Uh, int func one. Hit that. And now our function call rv equals func one and semicolon. And we'll go ahead and um, there, take out semicolon build and run it and it says hello world then this is function one okay so what's going on here is we've declared character array as far as into this function here and it's only visible inside this function it can't be tampered with unless we sit there and send a pointer to this value this specific area uh, to this character array or memory area that this character array is occupying currently or allocated to all right this function here has another character array called buffer 20 and this is you know has loaded into it this is function 1 this one and this one are not the same they're independent of each other there are two separate memory areas all right and usually they're loaded as far as when it goes back into their function that it has a memory but they're two separate memory areas already predefined and declared at this point in time so they're not visible to one another like I said, unless of course you're going to go through on, you know, passing a pointer to a variable function and then sit there and do the work that way. So we go step past that and we're going to go ahead and look at an external variable. In this case, we're going to do a global variable uh, with the same name, buffer. And we're going to make it longer 30 equals this is a global variable slash n go ahead down here and put slash n on it too get, make it neater need the semicolon on the end up here I'm going to build and run so you can see it now alright as you can see the global variable is still not visible in both of these areas at present time because variables of those that name has already been declared however at times uh, depending on the compiler, you can remove the variable that's internal, build again, run, and it says this is a global variable. And as you notice, because there is no variable with that name declared inside this function, it went ahead and allowed access to this variable up here. Another way of getting access to that variable is using the extern character and 
and buffer right like this and that is now a declaration telling it to look at the variable that is global to this point here and this is actually the proper way you should do it All right? and as you can see it sits there and accesses it still and press any key to continue and let's see we're at 5 minutes and 27 seconds so at this point I figure what we should do is go ahead and do a little bit of adding in as far as additional files onto this and I think I'm going to actually pick that up on the next routine so you can see how these uh, variables and all are affected in other files and we have a little bit more time and I'm going to let this uh, tutorial end here thank you very much